Just like you, just going all in. Penn still is. But see, I don't. The difference between me going all in is that I just don't go all in on something like GameStop. Gotcha. What are you going all in on? I'm going all in on <laughs> Apple. <laughs> Apple is uh, my fifth stock for the for this week to watch. I bought a shit ton of it on Friday. Yeah. And um, I actually ended up selling all of my Spirit Air systems for it. I don't think that Spirit Air Systems is a bad stock to own. I always want to make sure that people uh, understand this. I will be back in the Spirit Air Systems. It's just not moving right now. And every little thing that comes about, people sell off for. We saw the, the Boeing uh, um, cargo plane that crashed in Hawaii and then stock tanks. Boeing tanks, Spirit Air Systems tanked, even though we're continuing to see uh, – buy orders come in from all these airlines. So Spirit's going to be back. I'm not worried about it, but it moves slow enough to where I feel good about going, going and buying a bunch of Apple. And I'll explain my reasoning why, Fat Man Zoom. We look at the chart here on Apple, and it is officially breaking out. Um, the 138 area, now I got this, my initial position was under 138. Now my average is 138. We look all the way back to September 1st. And Memorial Day weekend was such a shitty day for tech, for tech, big tech in particular. That's when really the sideways action for Apple, all the FANG stocks really kind of started. And in particular with Amazon and Apple, for the most part, ended up moving sideways. Netflix and that's in that conversation too. But 138 is where it retested and then it tanked. Then it came all the way back up to 145, um, but before that, retested 138 again in December, came all the way back up to 145, and then the 10-year yield went crazy, and so then it sold off again, came up and almost retested 138 back in April, and now we have officially broken over that. And so I think that the next stop for Apple at this point is going to be at 145.09, which is its all-time highs. We have earnings coming up this month for Apple. We also have the iPhone, which everybody gets excited for, and we always see a lot of buying uh, during those times. So I think... And and we, I made the argument uh, last for why Apple is going to be a stock to watch for just a whole month of July because it was only green 2% on the year. It was underperforming the SPY or the S&P 500 substantially, which is uh, unusual for, for Apple. Yeah. And so uh, I thought that with this breakout, it was going to be a good opportunity to – take a good chunk of change, buy some Apple. And I'm not going to hold the amount of uh, money that I have in Apple in it, in that I have in it now forever. I think once I see it above 145, I'll take a stop and, and, and trim out of uh, a reasonable amount of shares that I have to get back to a place where I'm comfortable with as far as risk exposure is concerned. But um, I think that I just wanted to capitalize on this potential breakout because it looks like it's happening. Uh, Michael Han asks, are you expecting people to buy more of iPhone and iMac? I think most of us bought what we need end of last year and the beginning of this year. I'm not sure going on all in now. It seems a little risky. Sure, it's risky, but everybody buys a new iPhone. Not everybody, but like the new iPhone comes out. Everybody wants it. Okay. Sure. Are you asking me if it's Yeah, true? I'm just saying, like, would you agree with that? Um, yeah, yeah. well, yeah, I think there's hyper around it. I, I think the question is, we talked about the iPhone upcycle yes. last year. Yeah. Um, I think it's, of those people, how many didn't upgrade? I don't know the answer, yeah, but I, don't I, I, I think there's still a large portion of them that didn't. Um, and you got to factor in people also in that year that are now eligible for upgrades. So, yeah, my only concern is we always talk about rate of growth. Will the growth, you can't just, like there's always going to be some attrition as far as iPhone sales are concerned. So it's still got to see substantial growth. Now, I'm bullish on Apple. I don't agree that everybody bought their iPhones. Yes. I mean, me personally, what are we on, the 13? No, we're on the 12. This is the 13 coming out. Coming up, yeah. I got the 11. And so I didn't get that, like the 12 was like a next like step up. So I don't know if it's 12, people are going to 12 to 13, but I think it's like the 11s that are going to jump to the 13, um, which I likely will just because I'll be eligible by then. Um, but I'm not worried about Apple. I think this is a good call, but you know, it's, it's right to be concerned about it, but let's not forget all the other things that Apple's doing. Yeah. iMac, no one cares. Um, iPhone, yes, people care, but 
They're getting into health. I'm worried about their new their um, Apple TV, yeah. like their Apple Plus or whatever that is, Apple TV Plus. Yeah. I don't think anybody's buying that, to be honest with you. Um, so as far as like concerns for Apple, there are other things that are bigger concerns than iPhone, iMac. But there's a lot of upside. Apple Watch, I think, is slowly becoming a monster. Yeah. I'm excited about that. We'll see. My question for you, though, is... Why sell all of Spirit? Why not sell part of Spirit? We talk about scaling in a lot. Mm-hmm. What what allocation of your portfolio is in Apple now? Apple takes up like seventeen percent of my portfolio. Seventeen? Yeah, yeah. So I, I've, I, but I've been trimming out of Spirit. I've been taking profits on Spirit. So this was just me selling the rest of it. Okay. I, I had three hundred and fifty shares of Spirit at one at one point. I sold the remaining two hundred this past. So week. what was your logic behind? Just getting getting in, it's such a huge allocation rather than potentially scaling it. To take advantage of the breakout. Okay. And so I'm still setting a stop. Like, So I'm setting a stop in two different places. One is going to be the managed risk. If this falls back below 138, I'm going to cut it to a point to where I feel comfortable with, which would be around 10% of my portfolio. And then if it breaks over 145, I'm going to take profit at 145 if it falls back below that once it breaks out. And then I'll continue to set my stop if it continues to just rip past 145. But there's that's my my strategy, my plan. I have 120 shares. See a couple of people ask me. So I have 120 shares of Apple and um, you know, we'll see where this goes. Some people are like, you know, what about your exposure to travel stocks? Like I thought that you were still on that bandwagon and I am. That's why I have you know, uh, 10% of the portfolio is made up of Marathon Oil. 10% of it's made up of OIH, which is the oil services. I have uh, 13% of my portfolio is made up of Airbnb. Penn is a reopening play. Like, so I have my exposure there. You know, I think that having one of the fangs, I was in Facebook and then Facebook w- went crazy after the FTC uh, news. And so I ended up selling Facebook and I sold the remaining of my spirit. And so then I rolled all into at, to Apple. Wow. Well, good luck, brother. Um, all right, guys, there you have it. Those are our five stocks that we are watching this week. Some of us are allocating 17% of our account, too. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love Apple, too. Um, guys, we sent out a watch list every day before the market opens. Five watch, five stocks that we're watching for that day. Um, I shouldn't say that day, but five stocks that we're watching. We send out every day. It's free. Click the link in the description. You can go ahead and get those stocks. Um, If you're interested in that, definitely check it out. Also, don't forget to hit the like button.